Alrighty guys, let's go ahead and get started. Thank you guys for joining me for my weekly outlook. Today is October 7th, so this is our weekly outlook for the week of October 7th. Um, this is your, if this is your guys' first time joining me, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. My name is David Schinkel. I'm the CEO and founder of Positive Traders. And uh, make sure you click that subscribe button if you're watching this replay, so that way you can catch all of the weekly outlooks. Um, and if you're watching this live, make sure you go and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Positive Traders, so that way you get notified and you can watch the replay if you aren't able to make this live. But other than that, guys, um, only thing I want to say is, and just my disclaimer, that this is not financial advice, guys, financial or investment advice. This is just for educational and informational purposes only. So just please be using it for that. Um, looking at this week, there is not a lot on the books, all right? If you actually look today, tomorrow, Tuesday, all three days to start off the week, there's no high impact news. So, and then also tomorrow is Columbus Day in the United States. So um, I guess, I think Canada celebrates Columbus Day as well. I'm not quite certain on that, but it does say bank holiday. Maybe it's something different over there, but uh, US banks are closed and Canadian banks are closed tomorrow. So I would expect, and then today the Japanese yen banks are closed or Japan banks are, banks in Japan are closed. So expect for the first three days this week, guys, or pretty much this whole week, the markets to, I wouldn't expect as much volatility as we've seen in the, in the past recent weeks, okay? Um, Wednesday, we do have some GDP for the pound. It is forecasted to be bad for the pound. Um, obviously, that forecast has no bearing on what the actual number is. And we have um, PPI for the US dollar um, Wednesday morning as well. And then there's some more, there's some CPI for the US dollar on Thursday. And then that's going to be it for red folders, guys. Um, Friday is pretty safe. Now there is a couple speakers, a couple FOMC members, um, preliminary U of U, UOM consumer sentiment. So just even though they are medium impact news, sometimes we see some medium impact news pretty volatile. So just, just watch out for, for those things, guys, but should be pretty light in those regards. Uh, exit that out. Um, so let me share with you guys a couple setups, all right? Make sure you have something to take some notes with, something to um, write these down. I'm going to be mentioning price targets, you know, where I think price is going to move towards, and we'll go from there. But let's just do a little bit of a recap on the dollar index very quickly, okay? So this right here is a trading idea I shared with all of you guys and went over on the weekly outlook on September 13th. You see at the top left here, September 13th. So almost a month ago, um, I predicted that the dollar index would do something like this. I wanted it to push down around the 30, 93.2 area and then take off and make some new highs. Now if we play and we look what happened, pretty, pretty accurate, right? Pretty dang accurate. We got really close. Uh, we didn't make a full move all the way down to 93.2, but we did see some downside on the dollar and it is moving up. So let's jump into the live charts. So where do I, what do I think is going on with the dollar? Well, I am overall bullish on the dollar. Okay. So um, if you guys are in the private group and part of my daily webinars that I do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday for all my students, I mentioned last week that I have a bullish bias on the dollar. So I am expecting these highs to be taken out at some point and the dollar index to move higher over the coming weeks and months. Um, however, specifically for this week, if I were to extend this trend line out a little bit, right? Now this trend line is, is, is not completely relevant because we have a lot of times where it tagged this zone in the past, obviously right here doesn't really have a lot of bearing on the trend line, but just a general, we have some confluence with this zone with also the 50 EMA right here. I think we may see a small little bit of a pullback on the dollar, maybe even a little bit of consolidation, but ultimately moving up, okay? Um, what I don't think we'll see, I don't think we'll see like an aggressive up move just straight up. I don't think that that's gonna keep happening like we've seen in the past week or so, or past two weeks. 
um, I'd, I'd expect it to maybe move down a little bit and then move up higher, okay? So what does that mean for the rest of the markets? Um, we're gonna go over dollar, yen, oops. Give me a second, guys. That was my fault, hold on. I need to just delete something. All right, so we'll do the share. All right, so some of you guys, some of you guys might have just seen that. Um, I, I, I do have a, we just called a short in the premium group. So, uh, for all my students, we are short on the trade copier. We are short dollar yen right now. Um, I'm expecting it to move towards. You know, what? I'll just give you guys this one for free. All right, F it, let's do it. Uh, let's go risk reward short. All right, is it this one? Yeah. Okay, so this is a trade we just placed, guys. Um, feel free to do with it what you will, but um, we have a 40 pip stop on dollar yen. I am targeting 112.73. Um, a little bit about this trade. If we just examine price action on the four hour, all right, price action's been pretty clean on the four hour. I'm not really worried about trend lines or anything like that um, at this point because I know. Most people, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to come grab this trend line and they're going to look at this and there can be some argument for the upside. I think that we are going to see some downside though, especially with the dollar um, pulling down a little bit. I think we're going to see Euro USD move up a little bit this week and I think we'll see dollar yen fall. Um, it's definitely, I think, going to take a little bit of patience. It might, it might take until, we might have to wait until London starts in a few hours here and you know just see what happens but main thing that I'm looking at I'm not I'm, I'm just gonna delete this trend line because I'm not even focused on the trend line I'm focused on price action guys so obviously as we see price moves up series of higher highs series of higher lows along the way right uptrend obviously all right all right so right here this is this is a key structure to pay attention to we're gonna look at this in just a moment okay um, and then we move up higher, make another higher high, a higher low, and a higher high. So the structure that I want you guys to look at is these two structures that I circled in red, okay? And the difference between the two is right here after we made this higher high and we had this impulse, right? We consolidated and we kept up moving higher. All right, so this is clearly showing bullish momentum still in the market. Now, if we look at this setup, right? So similar thing, right? We look, it's, it's almost the exact same setup, right? If we, if, let me remove this stuff. We have this consolidation and then it dips a little and takes off. All right, we have this consolidation, dips a little and takes off. So very similar patterns. Now the difference obviously between this one and this one is that with this one, we didn't make, we didn't consolidate or we didn't hold price at these highs and continue making highs. Instead, we actually saw a very aggressive, um, pretty quick um, retracement, right? It, it rejected around the, this high and came back down. And we have a little bit, um, a little bit of, a, I'm, I'm just seeing it right now in the four hour. We have a little bit of like a head and shoulders going on. Right? Let's go ahead and move this like right there. Now, if you guys are familiar with head and shoulders, head and shoulder patterns don't have to be flat, okay? So for example, they don't have to be textbook like this, all right? This is called the neckline, guys, right here. This is the neckline, all right? The neckline doesn't have to be flat. A lot of times you will see a setup like this, but there are ascending head and shoulders and there are descending head and shoulders, right? Where the neckline is it's something like that right to the other side. So in this case, what do we have? We have a little bit of an ascending shoulders, um, ascending head and shoulder pattern. And kind of what we're seeing right now, right? We did see that neckline break, 
we're kind of moving up to retest that neckline and then hopefully fall. That that's that's just purely confluence um, in having market structure that adds to our evidence. So that's really nice to see that. But the main the main point I'm trying to make, guys, is being able to read price action and see that right here is where the sellers right here is where the sellers stepped back into the market. And you can see that how aggressive this retracement was. It said that the buyers could not sustain this move to the upside. And we've essentially created, if you can kind of see, we have this zone, right? We have like these highs. This structure is where the most, the majority of price has been. Right, we, with the exception of a little small consolidation down here, and then this obviously, this is like what we call like a fake out or the creation of a top, however you want to put it. Either way, um, I am bearish on dollar yen, so definitely take a look at that pair, guys. I think there's some some good opportunity, and my risk to reward. I would have liked to get a little bit better risk ratio on this trade. It's a two point one four, and I am risking two percent of my account, so. I'm risking 2% of my account or 40 pips to make 4.94%, um, almost 5% or 99 pips, okay? So risking 40 pips to make 99 pips. I'm not risking 40 pips to make 10 pips or 40 pips to make even 40 pips. I'm risking, always risking, always looking to make double what I risk. That's really key. And the higher, the higher you can get, the better. The higher risk ratio you can get, the better. Um, now, the reason for my stop loss, let me let me blow your mind with something really quick, guys. I had two options with this trade, right? I had the option of setting my stop loss. This is this is the conservative approach, and this is what I did: is I set my stop loss just barely above this high, okay, or just pretty much above the highs of this structure. All right, and that's. That's what I felt was good to do. All right. Um, and if that's a 40 pip stop loss, and then we'll talk about the target in, in a moment. But what I'm trying to explain to you guys is why I put my stop loss where I did and, and how I decided to take 2% risk. So I put my stop loss at 40 pips or just above this structure. Or I could have had my stop loss if I wanted a little bit lower, right? I could have my stop loss down here half the size, um, but I would have lowered the risk if that makes sense. So I had, I was basically deciding, am I going to take a 40 pip stop loss trade and risk 2% or am I going to take a 20 pip stop loss trade and risk 1%? Either way, whatever your take profit is, you're still netting the same amount um, of profit at the end of the day. So I, I chose to do, like watch, I'll show, you, I'll show you guys what I mean. So look, 2.47, right? So if we risk 2% of our account, right now our risk ratio is 2.47. So we take that 2% and we would be looking to make 4.94% on our account. Now, if we make this stop loss 20 pips and you risk 1%, Look at that, you make the same amount, 4.95%, right? So see, so see what I mean, guys? Ho hopefully some of you guys had an aha moment right there, or you saw something that, like, it's, it's the same risk, right? I'm just choosing to have my stop loss a little bit higher, but I'm, I would be, I'm just, if I have a higher stop loss, then I use a lower risk, but because that makes my risk-reward ratio higher, um, and at, in, that, in that case, I'm risking 20 pips to make 99 pips. So I have a much higher risk ratio, so I'm able to risk less, but then I don't have the trade to be able to breathe as much, right? It, it, it has an easier chance of getting stopped out. So I would rather take the conservative approach where my trade has a less likely chance of getting stopped out, but I still have the same percentage of profit as if I had the tight stop loss and risked 1%, if that makes sense to you guys. Okay, so um, <coughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, guys, I had a cough. Um, we do need to break this support. Obviously, we need to break this support very soon. Um, I would say within the next like two to three, four hour candles. So that would be in the next like eight to 12 hours. We need to see 
like within the next 12 hours, within the next half day or so, we need to see dollar yen break these lows, you know, to, to, to keep up with that bearish momentum. If we, too, if we see too much stalling and too much consolidation in this area, then I'm going to close the trade. All right. And that, that's one reason why guys like don't take this as financial advice. Don't, you know, copy this trade unless you know what you're doing, because if you're not in my private group with all my students and where I'm updating the trade, um, it, the trade can change. Some things can change. You know, you, you, you don't, if we go into profit and it drops, you don't know if we set our stop loss to break even, you know, all that good stuff. So just make sure if you're taking a trade, any trades, um, just as a rule of thumb in general, if you're taking any trades whatsoever, make sure you're using the position size calculator, guys. So make sure you have this bookmarked. Like literally, guys, when I entered this trade earlier, I came right on here and used this position size calculator. I click up, first thing I do, currency pair, dollar yen, right? USDJPY. Boom, I chose to risk 2% on this trade, so I put that, right? That stuff always stays the same. Sometimes you'll do 1% or sometimes you'll do 2%. Now we figure out the stop loss. Okay, we already determined a 40 pip stop loss. And then your account size. All right, the account I was trading is like this. So it told me to use a 6.4 um, lot size. So if you guys follow me on Instagram or you follow me on social media, you'll see that depending, like if, once this trade is running, um, you'll see me post and it'll have, you'll see a trade on dollar yen with 6.4 lots. So, or, you know, 6.3, whatever lots. Um, Cause I put in the exact size, like one, 12, four, nine, seven, right? You put in the exact, in, in, you know, same thing with your account, right? Let's say you have $2,017 and 16 cents, right? Boom, you, you calculate it, you put in the exact, right? So you know what lot size to use. So you know how much of your money is at risk. If you're just blindly putting in whatever lot size you feel um, and you aren't being methodical, you, you know, you gotta, you gotta take trading seriously, guys. You know. You, don't treat it as a game. It's very, very serious. It's very real, real money. Um, so that's dollar yen. Uh, Euro USD. So obviously, if I am looking at a small pullback on the dollar index, right? I would be expecting the same thing on Euro USD. We have a very, very major level of support. I want you guys to understand where we're sitting at on Euro USD right now. Okay, if all of you guys take Euro USD and you just zoom out and you just look at raw price action. Where are we at in relationship to previous price? You guys see this major, major, major resistance level from 2015 all the way when we broke it in 2017. You guys see that? And then we have the support right here and then all this recent support. Okay. So understand guys that we are at a very key level on Euro USD. Okay. Now I am expecting Euro USD to do something like this. Okay. Now, do I think it's going to do a super aggressive move to the downside like this? I'd love that. I would absolutely love that because we're going to get in a short at some point in this area. We're getting, going to get into a long-term short on this trade at some point and we're going to take it all the way down. Okay. Obviously I would love that, but I don't think it's going to drop that aggressively, but I do think at some point watch Euro USD. Okay. But Okay, so there's a big but with that, okay? So we put in all this, look, so you can see my charts markings, okay? But I am, I, or I, I do think that it could see some short-term upside, okay? So understand that, guys. Like, I am bearish on EURUSD. I would be long-term long looking for sales on EURUSD, but for short-term, I think we're probably going to see a little bit of upside. We're probably going to continue to play in this, uh, flag for just a little bit longer, especially with this week, guys. You notice that there's not a lot of news in the market. There's not a lot going on. Um, there's that's not a catalyst. Usually, we need the catalyst or some sort of reason, right? Usually, news and fundamentals is what really moves the market and drives the market. And so, or that's when we see around when the big moves tend to happen because there's um, orders being filled and liquidity and all that good stuff. But um, you notice this week, not a lot of stuff. So we could see some consolidation around these lows, but I am telling you guys that once we break through this zone right here, this super strong weekly support level, Euro USD has gone to the downside. Okay. So that is my opinion. 
Um, anything you guys, if you want to drop a pair in the chat, if you want to see something, I'll keep going over some other pairs. So this is a pair we're in right now. This is a long-term trade. We're currently up. If you're in my signals group or you're a student of mine or you're connected to the trade copier, we are uh, up 300 pips on this trade right now. So it's a running trade. Um, we're looking for uh, almost 1,200 pips. 1,143 pips is our take profit. Um, we are at a pretty big level right now, okay? We are at, I had to actually mention this before, that this is our next, our next zone to be watching price action, and we're already here. Pretty crazy the moves that we see, right? You look at, look at last week, absolutely great for us last week, right? Look at those last two days. Such nice price action, guys. I broke this, this pair down. If you guys missed my webinar, I broke this entire pair down. I talked about the manipulation. I talked about how I knew this pair was going up. Um, a, such nice structure, right? We break those highs. We get that last kiss. We get that bullish engulfing candle. We get that bounce off of the 50 EMA. Like this is, this is one of those trades, guys. That's kind of like free money type of thing. Okay, it's like if you aren't if you aren't taking this type of trade and you know about it, you're really doing yourself a disfavor. But um, this is what I'm looking for: Swiss pound, Swiss franc. I'm looking for some more upside on pound, Swiss franc. I do think this week we definitely there is definitely room for a retracement. Um, I will be moving. So if you guys are students of mine, you guys are in the signals group, uh, you'll see inside of the, the signal channel in a little bit here. We're actually going to move our stop loss is at break even. So this is a risk free trade right now. I want to actually move the stop loss into profits to at least secure some of our profits. But I do think we might get a little bit of a retracement. But then, you know, long term, I am still bullish on this pair. So and I'll tell you guys right now, if this trade hits our take profit, if this goes all the way, this will be our biggest single winning trader, or at least pips wise. We made, I've made a lot higher percentage. I'm only going to make about 10% on my account. I say only, right? That's still a ton. 10% on my account if this trade hits take profit, but at least the most pips in a single trade, 1,143. Um, I think my record before this is a short that we took on pound. It was either pound yen or dollar yen, one of the two. I think it was, I think it was pound yen. Um, last year, the year before last, and we made um, 450 or 650, some sort of amount of pips on that. We could get in on GBP again. Um, no, I would not re-enter GBP. I mean, you guys got to think, right? What is the goal? The goal is generally to buy at the lows and sell at the highs. And we're at the highs right now. Definitely do not be chasing this trade, guys. If you are not in this trade with me right now, I'm just simply showing you guys what we're in, right? I'm kind of tooting my own horn right now, showing you guys how accurate and you know how good these, how good this is. Um, if you're looking to enter this trade, only look to enter this trade. Like I will potentially, you see right here, possible re-entry to compound, possible re-entry to compound. I am definitely looking for opportunities to compound, but I need it to break through certain levels first. I'm not any, even if it makes a pullback right now and then goes up higher, I'm not interested in entering on the pullback. I'd be more interested in the, the bigger long-term structure, you know, maybe entering in on something like this. Definitely, definitely, definitely do not be buying this pair um, because there's a good chance this week that it just goes straight down. Like, or a majority of this week it goes down. I wouldn't be surprised if we see it, you know, retrace a lot of last week's moves and then move up higher. Okay. So definitely, definitely do not get into this trade. Um, AUD USD and NZD USD, um, both of these, the next logical levels are in, in very similar with AUD USD and NZD USD. Like, I, I am very confident that both of these pairs will make a full retracement. So AUD USD coming back down to the lows and NZD USD. Uh, I mean, I don't even really have to change my circles. Pretty much the same thing, right? Pretty much the same moves to the downside. But I mean, we're if you're if you sell now, you're selling at the lows. There's a good chance that price could spike up this week, maybe retest this zone again and then fall back down. So don't get caught in that emotional trap, guys, of, you know, wanting to chase trades just because you missed the, the good moves or you missed the big moves. You know, everything is, is your own, everything is how you perceive it in your mind, guys. Like, 
it, it gets really psychological at the end of the day, but that's really what the market is. It's a mind game, guys. It's a psychological game. It's not easy, right? If, if, if this was easy, every single person would do this. You know, to, to some of you guys, I might be speaking gibberish right now because you don't maybe fully understand what I'm talking about, but I've dedicated the past four going on five years of my life, literally, guys, like I have looked at a chart and studied Forex every single day of my life for the, oh, I mean, okay, with the exception of like a couple days here and there, right? If I go on vacation or don't check the charts or don't have internet or whatnot, but with the exception of a couple days here and there, I check the charts and am on the charts, putting in chart time, putting in the grind every single day of my life for the past four going on five years, guys. All right, let that sink in really quickly. If some of you guys are like half into this, right? You know, you, you, you take it seriously for a month and then, you know, you don't, you never use good risk management, you blow your account, you kind of leave Forex alone for a while, you get back into it a few months later, like you are never going to be successful that way. You need, if you want to plan to be successful trading Forex, you need to treat it like it's real. Like it's like, it's something real guys. Like it's not, it's, this is not a game. I know it looks it's, it's, it's our perception is a little bit different because it's, it doesn't seem as serious sometimes, right? Cause it's candlesticks on a chart and you know, it doesn't always feel like money cause you're just pressing buttons and it's in lot sizes, but it's very real money guys. And the last thing I want to see any of you guys do on here is lose your hard earned money. You know, just because, so the main thing I focus on with you guys in here, you notice I talk about it a lot and I talk about it a lot with my students is mindset. Mindset is so, so important when it comes to trading guys. And if you don't get that mindset down, you'll never be, be a successful trader. It's simple as that. Um, you just have to shift that mindset guys. Take, take greed out of the equation, right? We're obviously all here to make money, but you have to understand that if you don't have a ton of money, if you don't have tens of thousands of dollars to put into a Forex trading account or hundreds of thousands of dollars to put into a Forex trading account, then you can't be expecting to have these crazy, crazy returns. You know, if you only have a couple hundred bucks to work with or a couple thousand bucks to work with, then focus on the skill, focus on the process of trading and let your money compound. If you only have a couple thousand dollars, you shouldn't even have the idea of trading Forex full time yet, right? Keep doing what you're doing. If you work a nine to five, you work a normal job and you got into Forex, Keep doing that. You need to put money on the table. You need to have a way to keep growing your account, right? Take your money, take whatever you can save and put that into your account and accelerate the compounding process. And you do this and you do this and you do this. Five years later, now you have some decent capital to work with, right? Now you have a $100,000 account to work with and you're actually able to make really consistent money off of trading. All right, but if you only have like $2,000 in your account and you're trying to tell yourself in six months, I'm going to quit my job and go trading full time, guys. I mean, I, some people, you aren't going to like me when I say it, guys, but it's not going to happen, right? But I'm not here to sugarcoat stuff, guys. I, I would rather see, just be honest and straight up with you guys and, and, you know, just, just, you need to be realistic with your, with your stuff, guys, realistic goals, right? So just, just being real with you guys. All right. Um, rest of the markets is pretty, um, slow. Oh, I do actually want, I wanted to mark off USD CAD cause I do want to talk about USD CAD. So USD CAD, let me just find it really quick guys. I had a, there it is. So I had a setup, same thing back on September 13th. Um, I marked off this blue zone and I said, we're most likely going to see some downside. And once we get to this downside, that's where my buy zone would be. Okay. And, uh, we press play and pretty accurate, right? Fairly accurate. I mean, we had a little bit of a, it didn't go straight down from when I originally posted it, went back up to this trend line, but it, it did come down, pulled back up. Did, and now it went down to our buy zone. Um, it did reject nicely off of this trend line. So this is, I'll, I'll, I'll go over all my trend lines with you guys, but let me be clear with a couple things, guys. Let me, sorry. I, I know I'm all over the place today, guys. If you don't, can't tell by now, I have some terrible, terrible ADHD. 
all right? These two trend lines, okay, these two red trend lines that make this channel, okay, the, the two that you see me switching from clicking, these are simply templates in my mind to see that there's a channel going down, okay? Because I know a lot of you guys probably see this and you're like, wow, that's a garbage, garbage trend line or whatever you want, whatever you have to say about it, okay? These aren't, like, I'm not, these aren't, like the Bible guys. Okay. I mean, it's, this isn't, this isn't like this has, this is the trend line. This is where price is, right? It's not like this is it. No, it's just, it's just, so in my head, I see this zone where we've kind of made this descending channel and we're going down, right? I can even put in, if it, if it makes you feel better, I can even put in this. Okay. But I don't like that. And that, that's, that's why I have those lines there is because I don't like how this channel this channel tool is, is showing, showing it. Okay. So what I recognize is we have boom, 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 fake out price back down, price back down, fake out price back into this zone, bounce off of this trend line. And now we're around this area again. Okay. So all I'm trying to say is like, just because we're right at this trend line right now, I don't think that maybe we'll stop here. We could actually go a little bit higher. I think we might go up to this EMA and then go back lower. Okay. Um, so I am interested in possible upcoming shorts on USD CAD. I'm more on the sidelines though. I'm not, not the biggest fan of this pair right now, but just kind of giving you guys some ideas and then this trend line by the way guys this trend line I don't know if you can see but it's from the high over here and we dragged it and we go down and it bounced off so if I put it in boom you can see I know that there's a lot on my charts guys I'm sorry oh one thing I will I'll remove can I remove this let me see daily yeah that's fine no not that this okay so go back to the weekly. Now you can see it a little bit better, right? And this is why I keep these long-term trend lines, right? Because this wasn't irrelevant. This trend line hasn't been irrelevant for weeks and weeks and months and months and months until we came back down. And then you see it on the daily when you scale in the daily. And that's, this is that trend line right there, guys. That's that weekly trend line. So powerful, powerful levels of support and resistance on those higher time frames. All right, but definitely, definitely watch price action. Um, I do think we're probably going to continue to stay inside of this little da uh, downwards or descending, however you want to say it, descending channel for a little bit more, for a little bit longer, probably at least one more move down to the, bo down to the bottom, at least one more move down to the, to the bottom. And then we'll kind of evaluate what happens, right? My original game plan was to buy down in this area and look for a buy up to 134. Many of you guys may remember that, but things have obviously changed a little bit. So we'll look at that. Um, CAD Jappy, I'm in a CAD Jappy sell in GBP USD buy off the daily. Okay. Um, CAD Jappy, C A D J P Y. Um, it's, I don't have it on here, so I don't know how much I have, how much analysis I'll have for CAD yen, but we'll look at it. CAD yen, let's see, take a look on the weekly. First thing I see on the weekly um, is this. I see last week's, I see, what I, what, what I see is I see three weeks, watch. Let me, let me remove everything for a second. What I see is I see a, th a three week long rally followed by a strong presence of sellers last week. So, that puts me at in a, in a more of a looking for a sell, right? I obviously would like to look for a sell too because we're at the top, right? We like to sell at the highs and buy at the lows. That's, you know, obviously there's, there's gray areas and there's, you know, different things for that, but that's the general gist of trading, right? Buy at the low, buy at the, at the lows and sell at the highs, not buy at the highs and sell at the lows. Um, but I would expect downside. So let's throw this back on. We broke out of this. Let's throw it on the daily. I don't even really like the daily that much. The four hour. Oh yeah, the four hour looks a little bit nicer. Right? Yeah, I, I would definitely be bearish, short term bearish on CADN. I'll keep it as simple as that. And then where it might move down towards, right? With something like that, you can go ahead and fib this out. Right? We can go ahead and fib the, the this little 
this last move. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. Might come back. I mean, 50% retracement. I mean, that's some good confluence, right? Where we had a previous pullback. So there you go. Just some quick little analysis. You know, I'd say the most, the odds are favored. I guess that's the best way to say it, right? Kind of like that. If I don't know how many of you guys saw the McGregor versus Kavi last night, that was a great, great fight. I don't know if you guys saw the preliminaries. Those were fun too. Um, but I don't even know where I was going with that. Something with fighting, but or something with. I don't, I don't remember, but 50% uh, retracement level looks pretty good. Um, just some quick analysis on this pair. Um, oh, odds, right? Yeah, Kevin, thank you. Yeah, saying odds, just just like the fight, you know, one one fighter is I think Khabib. Yeah, he was favored a little bit. I would say the downside is favored in this case. Okay, Kevin, good to see you, by the way, my my dude. Um, good to see everybody. Also, I see lots of familiar faces, lots of students. Everybody on you, lots and lots of people. Good to see everybody. Um, today honestly went a lot longer than expected. Oh, Euro GBP. Also, if you guys are a student of mine on our on one of the daily webinars last week, I mentioned that this was a pretty big level that I was expecting us to break. The main thing came from guys like this is this is this is what I mean by like price action, right? You see this big strong move up, right? If the buyers were going to take control, they would keep going. But the fact that you see such a big, strong push, and then immediately following that day, only bearish momentum. And then when we get to the support, we have this one blue buying candle where the buyers like pressed off this support, like where they were trying to regain control and potentially go back up. The sellers the next day said, no, no, no. We're, we're staying down. This is a downtrend, right? And I said, once we break the 50% retracement level, 61.8 was the next level. Now, unfortunately, there was a lot of high impact news last week that prevented me from entering this trade. Um, I wasn't able to get a good risk ratio on it for my style of trading, but um, it did follow my analysis. And anyways, just where I'm kind of going with this is um, for upcoming trades as far as value for you guys. I would be looking at potential shorts on Euro GBP. And also, by the way, whoever said, uh, well, let me finish my thought with this. Yeah, I'd be looking for potential shorts on Euro GBP. Um, our next target on Euro GBP is definitely going to be this major support area, kind of like this whole zone, kind of this whole area. How far does this go back? Yeah, kind of like right there, yeah. I wasn't going, I mean, I personally wasn't looking at that far. I was kind of just like looking at this far right here, but I mean, you can pull it all the way back if you want, but this is the most logical. And then of course, a full retracement at a hundred percent. So these are, these are the targets. I'll definitely be looking for entering this trade. And somebody said that they were long or they were in a buy. Sony, that was you They on a buy on GDP USD. I would be bullish on both euro usd short term gold shirt short term gbp usd short term right because i am bearish on the dollar short term okay so anyways um that is that guys uh, i'm gonna let the trades run so as far as trades going right now i have pound swiss franc running i'm gonna be moving the stop loss um into well it's at break even right now but we're gonna move it into some profits to lock in some profits and then our dollar yen trade it's in a little bit of drawdown right i mean guys if you think if you think every single trade you take is always going to be a perfect entry and you're never going to have any drawdown for your you know however many years 10 15 20 30 years of trading that you plan to be involved with it like you're in la la land right you're going to have losses you're going to have losing streaks you're going to have trades that sit in a lot of drawdown and then you're also going to have those crazy big win trades like we're in right now okay so at the end of the day guys it's just about staying focused staying consistent in progressing over time all right guys so that's it for me if you guys have any questions if you guys got some value out of this and you are not currently a student of mine i definitely recommend to go check out the links in the description um it's going to be a link to my website i'm actually in the middle right now of having a whole whole new website rebuilt and this whole whole awesome 
thing built for you guys. So all that is coming, but I do have a website, positivetraders.us, just like it sounds, positivetraders.us. You can go on there, learn a little bit more about me, what I do, reach out to me, and um, hit me up if you want to be in my group where all my, with all my students where I give out a bunch of signals and gave out this pound Swiss franc signal and take trades and interact and do daily webinars Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday each week. And to really have a nice, nice trading community inside of there, guys. So other than that, guys, I appreciate you guys' time. Have a safe trading week, guys. As always, risk management, risk ratio, number one, number two. Those are huge things to always keep in mind. Number three, position size calculator. Make sure you're always using that, okay? Other than that, if you are a student of mine, I'll see you guys tomorrow for the daily live webinar. If you are not, and I will see you on next week's weekly outlook at 8 p.m. Eastern time on next Sunday. So appreciate you guys' time. Have a great week. Take care, guys.